everyone, it's the Wise Bubbler here, and today I'm going to show you how to connect to HubSpot either to create contacts and then check if those contacts already exist and get those contacts. Um, it's very simple API calls, but I ran into the issue where some of those free plugins weren't working, so I just wanted to show y'all how to do it. Um, so the first step you're going to do is just create a HubSpot account, go to settings, um, and click on API key. And here you just get a simple API key. You'll just have to click to create that API key. Um, it's just one key, pretty simple. And then the next thing you'll need to know uh, before actually creating this call is the internal names for these columns. So each of these columns, you know, phone number, but that's not what you're using in the API call. So you wanna make sure you get the correct internal name. Um, so the way to find these internal name is you click on a contact, view all properties, and then manage properties. It's a bit of a stretch, um, but this is the fastest way I found how to get to them. Um, and then you can search for a property. So I created a test property. Um, and if you click on the property and then you click on this icon over here, it's like a little code icon and internal name. That's what you're looking for. That's what you need for every single column you're creating when creating a contact. Um, so just make sure you have those in advance. All right, so let's jump into Bubble and see how this looks. Uh, so if I go to the plugin editor, um, obviously using an API call and I'm splitting it up into two calls. One is to create a contact and the other one is to check if that contact already exists. And so let's go over it one by one. Uh, so the most important thing is content type application JSON. Don't forget that, uh, that your calls won't work otherwise. Um, and then let's look at the create a contact. Um, so it's pretty straightforward um, post call here. Um, the one thing about HubSpot is I couldn't figure out how to get the shared uh, authorization in the header. Um, not really sure how to do that. So you have to put it in each API endpoint. And so each API key, HubSpot API key, and you can dump it here. Um, obviously, always keep this private. This means it's uneditable. And the next thing we're going to do is just look at the JSON. So you do have to use JSON here a little bit, but it's incredibly simple. So essentially in JSON here, we have like this large object, which is properties. And then the properties have a list of objects. So this, I forgot what this is called, but this is a list of properties for that contact. And we can see here that then the list of properties are these two, the email and the test property. And if we look here, this is a list of properties and it's wrapped under, it's underneath the, mega, the parent property object. So um, over here we can see email and test property. And so these are the internal names we spoke about. So we have like the property and the internal name here, the internal name here. And then here is our dynamic bubble value. And we can call this what we want as long as we wrap it in this open close um, annotation, um, just so it creates an edit, um, an editable fields down here. And so to create a new object, you can just like add properties. Obviously you just put a comma and then you copy the object and then you put in the internal name, let's say like revenue and then you can change here to revenue and it'll create another field here and you uncheck private and you can do that for all your properties for each contact. Cool, all right, let's see. The next call is the get contact from HubSpot. So here, this is, again, very straightforward. I'll actually attach these, um, paste them in the description for the YouTube video. Um, but here we're just doing a search, essentially, for all the contacts where the email equals this email. Um, and so very simple, and we have the authorization. All right, so let's see how that looks in terms of workflows. So over here we have create HubSpot contacts and we have an email and the test field I created. And let's look at the workflows real quick. Um, so first what we're doing, uh, one thing to note is that both of these are action. So this is an action because we wanted to force the call to check if that 
contact already exists. So it's not data because it hasn't been refreshing so well. So when I create a contact, first I'm getting all the contacts where the input emails value. So it's doing a search for contacts on HubSpot where the email equals the input emails value. And then I'm creating a contact only if result of step one contacts count is zero. Um, so it's like very similar to bubble, like I'm doing a search for count is zero. Then we're gonna create that contact in HubSpot. And if not, if the count is greater than zero, then we're going to give an alert saying this contact already exists. Um, so let's test it out and then we are done. Cool. So let's do test at gmail.com and test field. Okay. So we created the contact. So it went through. We didn't get any alerts. And then I would just wait a second and create a contact. And you can see this contact already exists please use another email. Thank you so much for watching. We are a little bit over uh, five minutes. Um, I will attach a link to my editor, a paid link in the description. Thanks again and see you in the next video.